Well, thank you. Let's go on. Moving on. That's rib block and collarbone. Moving on to cicatero striking. Now, cicatero striking. I showed you this before. I'm going to get all through all the footwork right after this. Cicatero striking. You seen it on the other videos. I would like to repeat itself because repetition is the mother of skill. Don't say, oh, I've seen that before. I got it. You don't have it. You never have it. The day you think you have it, you threw. You don't need to train no more because you got it all. You threw. The reason why us martial artists practice the way we practice and we're here on the mat day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, the reason why we're doing what we're doing is because of the fact that we understand the day you stop practicing and the day you think you got it, that's the day you're in trouble. You never have it. So you're moving on to repeat ourselves. Single dead or striking. It's collarbone, five basic points of attack, cross the body, collarbone. Now you drop the weapon down. You don't try to bring the weapon around because you bring the weapon around, you got your body open. When you got your body open, then you're subject to attack. Once again, the weapon is on the outside, to point it towards the outside of the opponent and not staying within the frame. So as you're striking collarbone, collarbone, you drop it down. Keep that point facing towards the man. I don't care, be it a knife, be it a stick, be it whatever, keep that point facing towards the man. Drop it down, turn your wrist, coming up. Rib, cross the body, rib, and now we're thrusting. Again, right hand, collarbone, cross, collarbone, drop it down. Rib, cross the body, rib, and now thrusting to the left hand. Collarbone, cross the body, collarbone, drop it down, rib. Cross, rib, and thrusting. Switch it. Collarbone, collarbone. Rib, rib, and thrusting. Knees bent, relax. Collarbone, collarbone. Rib, rib, and thrusting. Collarbone, collarbone. Rib, rib, and thrusting. Collarbone, collarbone. Rib, rib, and thrusting. Collarbone, collarbone. Rib, rib, and last time, collarbone, collarbone. Rib, rib, and thrusting. When you're doing this, very important that you understand. Never let one strike become another. One is one, two is two, three is three, four is four, and five is five. What I mean by that is this. One is not that. Because now this will be coming back up into the number four strike. Remember what I tell you about the lock wrist? Identifying when the person knows, when a person jumped back. Now this is how you work it so you don't get hurt. Because you know it. One now you understand, you're not letting that person any opportunity to come back into you. You're not doing this. Two is not this. Huh. That's the guy in the street. Two. Two is here. Mm. Stop it. Three is here. Four is here. And five is here. Not three, four, and five. Over-exaggerated, but look at the difference with a knife. One, two, three, four, and five. When you're doing that to a person, say, James, please. When you're doing that to a person, and you're doing this, look at, look at the difference it makes. Give me that angle so they can try to get this good on the angle. Here. If I did this, one, notice the hand coming apart. Two, notice the hand out. Three, notice the hand. Four, and coming in, five. But watch what happens when I stop it in the frame of his body. One, two, three, four, and five. Here, 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 and here. You repeat that process a thousand times, people. Practice just that over and over. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. There you go. Pick up your stick and practice it. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Brush. Pick up your brush and practice it. And now you're using your clothes brush, right? What do we do now? Both ends. One, two, three. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. You work in it, right? You use it. Officers, law enforcement, use it with your pistol. Here, collarbone, collarbone, rib, rib, and thrusting. Collarbone, collarbone, rib, rib, and thrusting. So instead of this, here, is here you're using now your weapon in a different way. Pick up your keys and do it that way. Pick up a pen and do it that way because when you're holding it and you pick up your walkman and do it that way three four five one two three four five understand what you're doing you think you're learning five strikes the body's broken up into three parts people 
the body is broken up into three parts. Head, center section, lower half of the section. I taught you five strikes. I'll show you 15 strikes. One is a separate target. Two, separate side. Three, cross, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Now the body. One, two, three, four, five. Now the leg. One, two, three, four, five. Put it together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen strikes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen strikes into the groin. And at the same time, my opposite hand is moving. Opposite hand is moving. You understand? So it's one, one. See? Body, body. Leg, leg. You got 15 from five. 15 from five. People understand how dangerous and how important this is. You're learning how to use the lower half of the body, the middle of the body, and the upper body. You can start out like this. You all heard, everybody heard of Gracie Jiu Jitsu, right? Gracie, what do they focus on? Ground, grappling, grab, boom. When they grab you on your leg, taking you down, taking the shot. If you have a weapon in your hand, if you have a short stick in your hand, look at the concept, how it changed. Now you got a short stick in your hand. Instead of now focusing on the upper body, you could use a little bit of Gracie, put a little bit of on ease, and mix it up with some other type of jujitsu. So you got that weapon, you're moving around. Now attack the body. Boom, boom, boom. See? Attack the lower part of the body. Cross the legs. Bang. Here. Moving. Instead of thinking all the time, upper body. The man got his hands up. He's looking for you to come upper body. And you say, uh, uh, uh. attack the lower body. And then you work your way back up with the cicatero or the poking or hair or the fanny. You do what you want, but you just get him to commit and focus on one part of your body. Get his attention fast. Notice where his focus is. His focus is here. And when his focus is here, you're looking like this, you're moving, focus on it, bang, uh, oh. Then you attack low and then come back up high. Or you want to make it play, you say, here, uh, attack high and use your upper part and your lower part of your body. There's no one way. There's no one way. And there's no one art. You got to combine it. Because outside of the seat, there are no written rules. Everything goes. Remember, we stick it to the striking. Collarbone, collarbone, rib, rib, and thrust it. Now when you do this, not to add impact, to add impact, when you're striking, you take a step. So you, one, two, three, four, and five. Switch inside. One, two, step. Three, step, four, and five. That's impact. One, two, three, four, and five. Collarbone, collarbone, same exact secret that'll strike you, same exact five patterns of attack. You don't change that. The footwork change, four and five. One, two, three, four. Now moving the foot forward and backwards. Forward, backwards, forward, backwards, and thrusting. Front you go forward, two you go backwards, three you go forward, four you go backwards, five you go forward. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Forward, backwards, forward, backwards, thrusting. Forward, backwards, forward, backwards, thrusting. Now you move from side to side. From here, it's one, two, three, four, and thrusting. One, two, three, four, and thrusting behind you, in front of you, behind you, in front of you, and thrusting. Behind you, in front of you, behind you, in front of you, and thrusting. One, two, three, four. Last one. One, two, three, four, and five. Now you're going to alternate hands from right to left. One with the right, one with the left. Two with the right, two with the left. Three with the right, three with the left. Four with the right, four with the left. Thrust with the right, thrust with your left. One with the right, one with the left. Two with your right, two with your left. Three, three with your right, three with your left. Four with your right, four with your left. Thrust with your right, and thrust with your left. One with the right, one with the left. Two with the right, two with the left. 
Three with your right, three with your left. Four with your right, four with your left. Touch with your right, touch with your left. One with the right, one with the left. Two with the right, two with the left. Three with the right, three with the left. Four with the right, four with the left. And five with the right, and five with the left. Now you do it together. Collarbone, one. Cross inside, two. Cross three. Cross four. And five. And one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, good. And you can also do this single stick here in your one hand, both hands. Let me show you the application and the purpose for the moving forward and backwards. I uh, use each instructor at, at a time. I'll start out with uh, Sensation Master Scott. Okay, first we did the impact. One, where we step. Remember we did one, two, step, three, step, four, step, and five. That is for when you're in combat. That's when you're in a combat situation. You got the stick out, you got your weapon in your hand, stick, knife, comb, brush, keys, walkman, whatever it is. When you decide that you're going to attack, let me use my smaller stick to make it a little bit more practical. When you decide to use your smaller stick to attack, you don't go into an attack casually. You don't. You have to explode. You have to feel it. You have to bang, take it to the man. You have to rush in there and hit him and hit him hard. Exploding that person. So you may be here, there may be distance between you. And then when you decide that you're going to make that move, boom! Notice the footwork. It's step. I hit. Bang! I hit. I explode. Even if he puts his hand up, bam! Whoa, whoa, I'm moving. I explode. That's the reason for the step. They teach the same thing in the art of kendo when they do like this and they strike and they have their feet. Notice the footwork. Step. 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 The reason why they did is because they explode on you. When they hit you, it's bang, boom, and they move. Bang, they explode. That's the reason for the up and down stepping. Up and down stepping. Now, forward and backward stepping. Forward and backward stepping, he may try to run away from me. I'm moving forward. He may be attacking me. Bam, I'm moving backwards. So I'm moving forward and backwards, depending upon if he's attacking or I'm attacking and he's retreating or I'm retreating. Forward and backward stepping. Thank you, Sister Jay. Okay? Now, since they change, we have to forward and backward stepping. Now, we're going to come with what? The side to side. Side to side stepping. Okay? When we're doing the side to side stepping, change, get your stick. Single. He struck at my face. I'm stepping to the side. Moving out, stepping at my face. I'm stepping. Move. Side. Moving back. Out the way. Shift, move, cross distance, create a distance. I'm in a position where now, in order for him to strike again, he has to shift and he has to turn. If he came across my face this way, and I stepped. Same thing, I'm stepping this way, or I'm stepping this way, coming across here. See, now my next strike into the fan, motion movement, covered the distance. So that's what the cross stepping is for. The alternating hands, striking. Cirillo, please, Chris. Alternating hands is because you're moving from right to left. Once again, if a person stops this hand, you have this hand. That's one, one. You have one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Notice I'm using two different weapons, but it doesn't make a difference because you've got to understand where your hands are moving and where you're coming from. So it's one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. If you have something in your hands or if you don't have something in your hands, once again, he blocked, he stopped me. He stopped this, he stopped that, you move it, stop here, 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 strike, strike. Can't stop them all. It's not possible. Out in the street when he said, boom, boom, he's hit. Boom, hit, strike. You're constantly utilizing boom, 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 motion of your hand and up and down range on the body. So you're learning how to use both hands with a good flow. How to go from high to low without having a problem, without having to do this. Or, or, uh, uh, here, or, uh, uh. you know, not with that type of flow, but with a different type of flow, where you're constantly rolling and moving and motioning on, on the man. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to run into, last part, is a drill on how to swing and how to move the stick. 
Then we're going to get into the self-defense application utilizing on his movements and on his footwork for an empty hand. Okay? Drill. Call center wallet triple strike and drill. Outside. Striking patterns, one, to develop the flow once again, and also so you can understand how the stick works and the A works, how it uses, it, you use it as a guide. You're not mastering the stick, you're mastering the movements of the stick. So it's your guide. One, collarbone, right? Two, you pull back, ribs. Three, you're striking collarbone. Switching underneath. We call it a Hawaiian switch. Looping. One, two, three, you're switching. 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 Collarbone, rib, collarbone, switching. High, low, high, switching. Collarbone, rib, collarbone, switching. Collarbone, rib, collarbone. One more time. Collarbone, rib, and now we move to the second one. One, we use roof block here. So when you're striking a hit in your hand, automatically come on top. So you're striking one on top, roof block. Not this way where it comes down on your head. You're going to come under and over. Once again, in the self-defense situation, in different types of situations, you never know what you're going to use. This is a very good movement, very good block when you see it applied with the footwork. One, roof block. Two, ribs. Three, around the head, collarbone. Underneath your arm. One, roof block. Two, is your ribs. Circular motion, collarbone. One, two, collarbone. One, two, collarbone. One, two, collarbone. You notice still high, low, high, still the same combination. High, low, high, 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 collarbone, roof block, hitting the ribs, collarbone, collarbone, roof block, Hitting the ribs, collarbone. Moving on to the third set. Ready? Triple striking. Right? And the last one. One, collarbone, place it on your chest. Watch that strike again. Collarbone, place it on your chest. Collarbone, place it on your chest. Rib. Now you come off the chair, just trace your arm. You usually step forward when you do that and put it under your arm. One, on your chest. Two, into the ribs, three, trace it, come under the arm. Before I step forward, now I step backwards just because I'm running out of room, so I have to shift my feet, alternate forward and backwards. So you're striking one, two, trace, under the arm, one, two, trace, under the arm, one, two, trace, under the arm, one, two, three, switching, one, two, three, bend the body, one, two, three, stay light, one, two, three, so relax. One, two, three, and collarbone, rib, collarbone, same head. High, low, high, all three strikes are high, low, high, all three sets were high, low, high. High, switching, high, low, high, last one, and high, low, high. Now we're going to put them all together so when you get a little better and you get an understanding of just how to flow, you go from the first one, left and right side, second one, left and right side, third one, left and right side. First one is, remember, outside. One, two, three, switching, one, two, three, second one, one, two, three, switching, one, two, three, to the chest, one, two, three, switching, one, two, three, first one, one, two, three, switching, one, two, three, second one, one, two, three, hitting, one, two, three, third one, one, two, three, hitting, one, two, three, first one, one, two, three, switching, one, two, three, switching, one, two, three, hitting, one, two, Three, third one, one, two, three, hit, and one, two, yame. What's that for? It's just once again to get your hand movements in sync, your coordination in sync, to develop a flow, develop a flow, how to move from one point to the other. You practice this if you can, a couple of butter knives, a couple of sticks, a couple of pens, a couple of combs. The one, two, three, three, two, three, two, three, cross the chest, to chest, and when you're moving, you develop a nice flow. 
and it's the beginning of learning how to. This, this is how I feel about it. No such thing as mastering a knife, mastering a stick, mastering a short stick, mastering this and mastering that. There ain't that much time to master all of that. You're going to run out of time, you're going to run out of master, mastery. You just become proficient in movement. Master movement. Master movement, have a good concept. Whatever you put in your hand, you move accordingly to the weapon. You're not going to try to cut with the back of a knife, common sense. Use the front the way it should be used. Use the weapon the way it should be used and move with the same flow that you learn how to move from this. The Arnie stick. I told you at the beginning of this tape, we are not mastering the stick. We are mastering movements from the stick. Mastering the movement from the stick. You are not mastering the stick. And the last thing I want to show you is one of our many patterns of 12 striking so you can develop a flow. Okay? Scott, please. Pattern of 12. We have temple, jaw, muscle, elbow, stomach, groin, heart, top of the head, outside collarbone, inside collarbone, across the eyes, hooking, and knee. That's our first pattern of 12. This is develop a flow. One is temple, two is the jaw, three is the muscle, four is the elbow, five is the stomach, six is the groin, seven is the heart, eight the top of the head, nine is the collarbone, 10 is the collarbone, 11 you're pulling across the eyes, and 12 you're knee. Right? Now, and you pick it up and you develop a flow, you're going temple, jaw, muscle, elbow, stomach, groin, heart, top of the head, collarbone, collarbone, across the eyes, hooking the knee in. Switching to your left hand, temple, jaw, muscle, elbow, stomach, groin, heart, top of the head, collarbone, collarbone, across the eyes, hooking the knee. You notice how my left and my right hand, I'm able to do the same thing? You want to develop, once again, that flow from left to right. You don't want to be dependent on your weak side or dependent on your strong side. You don't want to be dependent on anything. Whatever you got to work with, you work. We're going to show you that strike slowly, that pattern one more time slowly, all right? We're going to do it from right to left, just one time. One is the temple, two is the jaw, three is the muscle, four is the elbow, five is the stomach, push it down, six is the groin, slide it up. Seven is the heart, eight is the top of the head, nine is the outside collarbone, ten is the inside collarbone, step forward, living across the eyes, hooking and knee in. With the left hand, you have temple, jaw, muscle, elbow, stomach, groin, heart, top of the head, outside collarbone, inside collarbone, across the eyes, hooking and knee in. If you can remember that, or much as you can of that, understand what you're learning how to do. I use a short stick to demonstrate this. So say, James, please. You're learning how to strike 12 times, 12 times, 12 times. That's important, because if I just get six, I got one, two, three, four, five, five, six. I got what I want. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six strikes, even if I don't get the other 12. But if I'm able to get the other 12, then I got seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. I'm learning how to move my body more than once. Because in a street battle, you don't want to rely on no one strike, one night. I don't even want to go in thinking I'm going to just try to catch him with a right hook or catch him with a cross or catch him with an uppercut. I don't even want to have that frame of mind. I want to go in there thinking I'm going to hit him 50 times, 60 times. I'm going to bounce. I'm going to move from one point to the other, to the other, to the other. That's what that teaches you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, when I did that, I used front and the back of the stick because of the kind of weapon that I had in my hand. If I was a knife, I would just be cutting. If it was a stick, a blood stick, boom, boom, I'd just be hit. Because it's a short stick, I'm utilizing both. And when you good and put them all together, temple, jaw, muscle, elbow, stomach, groin, heart, top of the head, cross, cross, at any point, punch, punch, hit, hit, fanning, poking, switching poking, up and down, here, come right back into my strike. Is the man going to let this do, is the man going to let me do this to him? No. No way. He's going to fight back. He's going to resist. But I expect that. But I'm going to take as much of this as I can get. If it's three movements out of 12, I'm going to get him in. Ten movements out of 12, I'm going to get whatever I can in. I expect the man to fight me. 
But my whole concept is, as much as I can get, as much as this man will allow me, I'm going to take. I'm not going to fall short. I'm not going to stop short and let his mind think and let his man get a chance to, oh, what is he going to do? And then count it. Forget that. I'm going to do what I have to do, and it's up to him to stop me. Up to him to stop me, if he can. If he can. If he can't, well then, so be it. But that's the frame of mind you want to walk into any type of self-defense situation, especially dealing with an empty hand situation or a weapon situation. You want to walk in that thing, I'm going to do as much as I possibly can. Not I'm just going to do this and stop. Because this person here is ready to go above and beyond the comfort zone. Let me tell you something about weapons. I was teaching a class the other day, and I explained this to the people. If it makes sense, keep it. If it don't make sense, throw it out. If you think it's something that's just totally ridiculous, or it's dumb, by all means, don't use it. I don't know how you feel about it. I'll tell you how I feel about it. When a person picks up a stick to me, and pulls it out of his car, out of his trunk, or wherever, he holds that stick in his hand, my frame of mind is, this guy's going to kill me. Not he's going to hit me with the stick once or twice. He's going to kill me with that stick if I give him the opportunity and if I give him the chance because he's ready to do that because he don't know what blow. This blow here, boom, may be all I need for me to die. Some people, you hit them in their leg, they catch a heart attack, they die. This man picked up that stick, he's ready to kill me. When a guy in the street do like this, oh, forget it. He's ready to kill you. Now, oh, he's not going to scare me or slice me up or stab me. When a man pulls out a weapon on me, my mind is this man is trying to eliminate me. He is trying to take me out, period. So now what kind of mentality do I have to have so I can do what I need to do successfully to get out of that situation? I can't have it. I can't think casual. I can't think, oh, he's just trying to hurt me, or he's just trying to scare me, or he's just trying to beat me up. No. I have to tell myself, that man is trying to kill me, so I will go above and beyond my comfort zone, do whatever it is I have to do to stop him from taking my life, from hurting me. So automatically, I program myself going into the situation knowing what I have to do. No matter what, I can't afford to stop. If I get hit once, I can't afford to stop. He's going to finish me off. If I get stabbed once, I can't afford to stop because he's going to finish me off. Not if he cut me, it's over. Oh my God, what if, what if, what? No, no, what if nothing? I know. If I don't do it, I got no choice, the man is going to finish me. That's how I feel about any weapon situation, about any combat situation. This man came up to me, had the nerve to walk into my comfort zone, my space, and demand what I had. What is he prepared to do for it? He must be prepared to go above and beyond because he don't know what I'm prepared to do to keep what I have. So he's ready. So you got to have the proper mentality. It's a mindset. Mental first, you work on it. It's a mindset. You've got to go in there with the proper attitude and the proper mindset. Or oh, people, I don't care how much training you have, you're going to lose. I know people have been training for years, never been hit. Never been hit by someone who really wanted to hit them. As soon as they got hit, they got overwhelmed. They got blown out. They lost. Ten years, 15 years of training go out the window because they didn't have the proper mindset. Understand what self-defense is all about. Not 50, 60, 70 years of training. Because when you go into boot camp, before you went into war, and before you went into battle, you had six weeks of training. And some of those guys were the most fierce and the most vicious killers you ever see because they understood one thing. It's not a game. It's about survival. you got six weeks to learn as much as you can, as quick as you can, and retain it and keep it and make it work for you. If not, you're going to lose. So have the proper mindset. There ain't nobody out there who's, your, who's joking around or playing games. That man is your enemy. He means to do you harm, means to take your life. you got to understand that. And when you do understand, that's the type of mentality that person's walking around with, then... Mentally, you'll be prepared, as well as spiritually, you'll be prepared to do what you need to do. That's the end of this part. Sure.